Hey guys, it's Vmasters Reactions, and this is another reaction video to how to understand the image of a black hole. This came out yesterday, I believe, maybe earlier today. Hasn't been out a while, guys, and it is trending crazily. This is a picture of it. Apparently, the Event Horizon Telescope has taken the first picture of the inside of a black hole or something. I'm not exactly clear what I'm looking at. But there is a video to explain it, which is why I'm reacting to it. I don't want to know too much about it before I watch the video. So all I know is people sent me this. It's apparently happening late yesterday or early today, or it's been happening for the day or so. We're going to just watch the video and find out because I'm basically just going off of opinion and assumption at this point. So here we go, guys. It's how to understand the image of a black hole. On Wednesday, April 10th, 2019, you will probably see the first ever image of a black hole. That's when the Event Horizon Telescope will be releasing their results. And I haven't seen them yet, but I think they're going to look something like this. And I can be relatively confident because, we'll tell you this well, tonight. it's going to look a bit like a fuzzy Today's the 10th, okay. Stain. Today. But if you are disappointed by this image, I think that misses the gravity of the situation. <sighs> From this image, we should be able to tell whether the general theory of relativity accurately predicts what happens in the strong gravity regime, that is, what happens around a black hole. What I want to do here is understand what exactly we are seeing in this image. So here is my mock black hole of science. And this sphere represents the event horizon. That is the location from which not even light fired radially away from the black hole could be detected by an outside observer. All of the world lines end up in the center of the black hole in the singularity. Once you're inside here, there is no coming back, not even for light. The radius of the event horizon is known as the Schwarzschild radius. Now, if we were just to look at a black hole with nothing around it, we would not be able to make an image like this because, well, it would just absorb Absor all electromagnetic radiation that falls on it. But the black hole that they're looking at, specifically the one in the center of our Milky Way galaxy, Sagittarius A star, has matter around it in an accretion disk. In this accretion disk, there is dust and gas swirling around here very chaotically. It's incredibly hot. We're talking millions of degrees, and it's going really fast, a significant fraction Insanity. of the speed of light. And it's this matter that the black hole feeds off and gets bigger and bigger. I'm guessing over that's time. what the but spirals are. The accretion disk does not extend all the way into the event horizon. Why is that? Well, that's because there is an innermost stable circular orbit. And for matter around a non-spinning black hole, that orbit is at three Schwarzschild radii. Now, in all likelihood, the black hole at the center you don't of our say. galaxy will be spinning. But for simplicity, I'm just considering the non-spinning case. You can see my video on spinning black holes if you want to find out more about that. So this is the innermost orbit for matter going around the black hole. If it goes inside this orbit, it very quickly goes into the center of the black uh, hole. Okay. And we never hear from it again. Gotcha. But there is something that can orbit closer to the black hole, and that is light. Because light oh. has no mass, it can actually orbit at 1.5 Schwarzschild radii. Now here I'm representing it with a ring, but really this could be in any orientation. So I'm so guessing sphere the spirals we're seeing orbits. are lighted matter getting sucked there, in. Of course you could never go there, but if you could, you could look forward and actually see the back of your head because the photons could go around and complete that orbit. Now the photon sphere is an unstable orbit, meaning eventually either the photons have to spiral into the singularity or spiral out and head off to infinity. Now, the question I want to answer I'm is thinking what does that's this what that is. black, quote unquote, shadow in the image correspond to in this picture of what's actually going on around the black hole? Is it the event horizon? Are we simply looking at this? Or is it the photon sphere or the innermost stable circular orbit? Well, things are complicated. And the reason is this black hole warps space time around it, which changes the path of light rays. So they don't just go in straight lines like we normally imagine that they do. I mean, 
They are going in straight lines, but space-time's curved, so yeah, they go in curves. So the best way to think of this is maybe to imagine parallel light rays coming in from the observer and striking this geometry here. Of course, if the parallel light rays cross the event horizon, we'll never see them again, so they're gone. That will definitely be a dark region. But if a light ray comes in just above the event horizon, it too will get bent and end up crossing the event horizon. It ends up in the black hole. Even a light ray coming in the same distance away as the photon sphere will end up getting warped into the black hole. Hence the spiraling. Across the event horizon. So in order for you to get a parallel ray which does not end up in the black hole, you actually have to go out 2.6 radii away. If a light ray comes in 2.6 Schwarzschild radii away, it will just graze the photon sphere at its closest ah. approach, and then it will go off to infinity. That's cool. And so the resulting shadow that we get looks like this. It is 2.6 times bigger than the event horizon. And you say, what are we really looking at here? What is this shadow? Well, in the center of it is the, the black event horizon. Hole. It maps pretty cleanly onto, onto the center of this shadow. But if you think about it, light rays going above or below also end up crossing the event horizon just on the back side. So in fact, what we get is the whole back side of the event horizon mapped onto a ring on this shadow. So looking from our one point in space at the black hole, we actually get to see the entirety of the black hole's event horizon. I mean, maybe it's silly to talk about seeing it because it's completely black. Yeah. <laughs> but that really is where the points would map to on this shadow. This is it gets deep, guys. Because the light can come in and go around the back and, say, get absorbed in the front, you get another image of the entire horizon next to that in another annular ring, and then another one after that, and another one after that, and you get basically infinite images of the event horizon as you approach I think that's the what this is this with shadow. the spiraling image. So what is the first light that we can see? It is those light rays that come in at just such an angle that they graze the photon sphere and then end up at our telescopes. And they produce a shadow which is 2.6 times the size of the event horizon. So this is roughly what we'd see <laughs> if we happen to be looking perpendicular to the accretion disk. But more likely, we will be looking at some sort of random angle to the accretion disk. We may be even looking edge on. And in that case, do we see this shadow of the black hole? You might think that we wouldn't. But the truth is, because of the way the black hole warps space-time and bends light rays, we actually see the back of the accretion disk. The way it works is light rays coming off the accretion disk bend over the top and end up coming to our telescopes. So what we end up seeing is something that looks like that. <laughs> Similarly, light from the bottom of the accretion disk comes underneath, gets bent underneath the black hole. Oh, and it makes it look... comes towards us like that. And this is where we get an image that looks something like the interstellar black hole. That's crazy. Ah, so that, that actually had meaning. Light that awesome. Comes off the top of the accretion disk here can go around the back of the black hole, <laughs> the photon sphere, Sorry. and come out the bottom right here, producing a very thin ring underneath the shadow. Similarly, light from underneath the accretion disk in the front can go underneath and around the back and come out over the top. That's crazy. That's why we see this ring of light here. This is what we could see if we were very close to the black hole, something that looks truly spectacular. One other really important effect to consider is that the matter in this accretion disk is going very fast, close to the speed of light. And so if it's coming towards us, it's going to look much brighter than if it's going away. That's called relativistic beaming or Doppler beaming. And so one side of this accretion hence, disk is going to look much brighter than the other. Hence the brightness. A bright spot in our image. I so get it. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what That's we're some really deep looking at when stuff. we look at an image of a black hole. If you have any questions about any of this, please leave them in the comments below, and I will likely be making a video for the launch of the first ever image of a black hole. So I'll try to answer them then. Well, I'll keep Until you in mind then, then, sir. I hope you uh, get as much enjoyment out of this as Very well know, done, considering he's using paper. For like the last week. Very cool. Very cool. I guess what would be exciting is, is 
to watch it over time, how it changes, right? There's a lot of hope that there are blobs moving around. And, you know, if you see a blob go around the front and then it goes around the back, then you see it in the back image, etc. then that's going to be kind of cool. Very cool, guys. I guess I should assume it's going to be deeper. There obviously is a lot of science behind it. I was getting most of what he said. I'll probably rewatch it once or twice because halfway through, I was like, all right, I get this, I get this. But there was a couple things I wasn't quite understanding, but then he kept rolling with it and I'm not going to pause it and rewind it and stuff like that. Otherwise, what kind of reaction would that be? If I got to keep pausing it, backing it up, replaying it, it'll just confuse people. I have to re-edit it, so when I re-edit it, I will watch it once or twice more, and I'll probably get the gist of it. But that is actually really cool. I like the diagram he did. It's funny how such an advanced scientific explanation was done using a metal rod and, like, paper mache, so to speak. Like, he just had a globe, and then some paper rings, and some wire, and rods. Very cool. I'm definitely going to subscribe to this gentleman. I'll put the original video in the description below. But if you want to know, I don't know how to pronounce his name. It's V-E-R-I-T-A-S-I-U-M. Verticium? All I know is I'll have the original video in the description below. But if you guys want to check it out, I highly recommend subscribing to him if you are into this kind of stuff. Very cool video. I'm subscribing to him just because I want to get updates on his newest videos. So... Let me know what you guys thought. I thought it was pretty cool. I'm definitely going to have to watch it a few more times to grasp it. So if you guys want, comment down below. We'll talk about it. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.